And I want you to say that same line again. You're good. And your mercy is forever. And your mercy is forever. Amen. We're asking God to wrap you in his goodness. Come on. You're good. You are good. Come on, you're good. One more time. His goodness is like a garment. Come on. You're good. David began to talk about the goodness of God. He said, I would have fainted. Lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Not in the time to come, but in the land of the living. And I don't know about anybody else in this room, but someone is due to see the goodness of God in a new way. I sense it so powerfully that God is ready to show you his goodness in a new light. Lift your hands. Father, let goodness fall. Let the revelation of how good you are fill this entire sanctuary. And let us not compare you to gods of old. Let us not compare you to what we've had before. But we thank you that you're good and you don't take it back. Goodness is your character. So today... We stand in, abide in, live in the goodness of God. And we won't faint unless we see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Can you help me thank God for just being good? I'm going to try that one more time. Can you thank God just for being good? I'm not asking you to thank him for the clothes on your back. I'm not asking you to thank him for what you drove up in today. I'm not even asking you to thank him for what you just sat down in and what you're standing upon. I'm asking you to thank him just because he's good. I don't need another common denominator. I don't need another commonality. All I need to know is that I love you because you are good. You're good beyond measure. You're good beyond what I deserve. You're good. You're good. You're good. Hallelujah. High five somebody. Tell them real quick, he is still good to me. He's still good. Try the other side. Tell him he's still good to me. <laughs> I would have already been in the grave, but I believe he's good. The reason I'm alive and I'm better than I've ever been before is because God is good good. He is good. Welcome to All Nations Worship Assembly of Atlanta. We are so honored to have each and every one of you here with us today. Uh, very quickly, if you're here for the very first time, this is a big day for us. It is Operation 200K. Y'all scaring me, All Nations. It is Operation 200K where we are believing God that before before we end this day, we're going to raise $200,000 towards the future of All Nations Worship Assembly. Uh, so if you're here for the very first time, I just want to throw your hand up real quick. I just want you to be accounted for. Real quick. L leave it high. Leave it high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, hey, 26, 27, 28. Can y'all help me thank God for 28 first timers in 12 p.m. service? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So honored again to have each and every one of you here today. Um, excuse some of us that we're in 10 a.m., we're still trying to recover. Um, <laughs> So, so, Chan, thank you for giving us some extended worship today because I'm still trying to pull my life back together from our first service today. Um, what I want you to do, grab your service selfies real quick. Grab them real quick. Get next to somebody that look like they got bundles of joy of the Lord. <laughs> bundles of joy. 
I mean bundles and bundles of joy of the Lord. Psalm 24, Psalm 26, but God gives the increase. Bundles, bundles of joy. Y'all pray for me, pray for me. I want you to hashtag at All Nations ATL, NYATL, hashtag Open Heaven. Open heaven. Um, I literally, I promise you all, Sunday evening in my downtime when I'm reflecting on the day, I go back and I scour Instagram in particular looking for this hashtag. So I want to see, I'm telling you, I go and I like everybody that hits it. Just, so just go ahead and um, hashtag All Nations ATL so we can follow you and uh, see how, how well you looked in the service selfie today. All right. I want to uh, very quickly run through uh, a series of announcements of things that are going on here. We're going to do our offering. I'm going to do my best to hold myself together. Uh, we're going to do our offering. And uh, we're going to move right along. And I'm going to have y'all out of here by 415 today. I believe it. God said 415. I believe it. I believe it to be so. Somebody said that'll be a record. It would be pretty close to it. 12 p.m. service can get kind of crazy. We never know what's going to happen. So um, let, me, let me run through this real quick. Um, fire's coming to Atlanta, Georgia. Fire's coming to Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> June 14th through 16th, and I want every one of you here. This is our training and equipping conference, that our very first one, as a matter of fact. And so I'm very excited about what God is going to do uh, in us and through us during this time together. Um, Chandler Moore, who just so powerfully led us into the presence of God, he's going to be leading uh, leading us uh, some during that weekend. Uh, Broderick McBride, our lead intercessor who's actually over teaching our teens today. He's going to lead us in moments of, oh, yeah, we're, we're dual functioning. We're multi-purpose. Listen, you don't get one job at All Nations. You get about 17, all right? Um, Justin Foster, who is our marketing director, he's going to be leading out. Uh, just a host of other people that I'm very excited about, and I believe God is going to do something very powerful for us and for Atlanta during these uh, two and a half days of training and equipping. So I want you to register now. And if you have product, if you are a vendor and you're interested in taking the opportunity to have a vending table, I want you to submit your application. Everybody shout today. Now listen, I got about 333 entrepreneurs in here. And just about every one of them is legit. There's, there's a couple. There's a couple that probably need to go get one more nine to five. But just about everybody. I'm sorry. No, I'm being, I'm being honest. I, I'll preach you through it. I'll preach through it. It'll make sense. Um, um, so, and there's nothing wrong with a nine to five. Y'all do know that, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with making your job work for you until you can work for you. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> so, so that, I promise that was no shade. All right. So um, if you're looking to be a vendor during um, our FIRE conference, you can fill out an application today online. And uh, once approved, we'll send you all the information for payment, et cetera. Um, also, we'll, we'll be releasing FIRE teams today. Uh, so during our FIRE conference, we're going to have a training and equipping co conference for our teenagers, middle schoolers, and high schoolers. No cookies and tea. We're going to be training and equipping and preparing. So I want you all, if you have a teenager or you know some teens that need some deliverance and need to learn about the importance of operating in the gifts of the Lord, here is your time. Get them signed up uh, now. What's my next one? Uh, oh, and we need serve teams for fire. I think I told you all we're going to need about 150, 200 people to help us facilitate this weekend. It's going to be a very busy weekend, but I believe a very profitable one. Uh, so I need, if you're interested in serving, um, I need you to go ahead and go to the website now, um, allnations.org, not now, but you know this week, uh, backslash team fire and help us uh, fulfill what we're called to do to make this conference a success. I told our 10 o'clock service, uh, the way God elevated me was not because I was gifted, but because I was willing to submit and to serve. Y'all know low is the way up, all right, and that God 
will give you stuff that you may feel like is beneath you just to prove your heart in a thing. Y'all, how many of y'all have ever cleaned a church toilet? Just raise your hand. Some of y'all said last week, that was me. <laughs> All right, so service, the heart of service is the way. It's the way up. All right, so we all lead by serving, and so I need serve team help for our conference. What's, what we got next? Um, our men are having um, a night of prayer and intercession next um, not next Friday, the Friday after, April the 20th. All of my men, I want to see you here at 730 for Stand in the Gap. God's doing something powerful in the men of all nations across the campuses. But in particular, I've got a heart for Atlanta, and I'm ex excited to see what God has already started doing here. What I got next? Also, our men's ministry. I mean, our men are just busy. Bless, bless. I mean, we're going for it. Strongman Saturdays. Every Saturday, 930, Piedmont Park. Amen. How many of y'all know it's time to get in shape? Some of y'all ought, ought to just thank God that winter is still holding on. God, God has given you time to get summer ready. Ain't he good? Won't, won't he make a way out of no way? He's giving you time. He's giving you, yeah, he, he's giving you time just to get that summer body ready and, and, and together. He's so gracious to us. Ain't he gracious? All right, so Saturdays, 9, 9.30, man, we're in Piedmont Park. We'd love to have you come out with us. What we got next? Uh, Wednesdays, we don't really have Bible study. We have church all over again, all right? So this series that we're in in particular, I'm preaching it through on Wednesday nights as well because it's packed with a ton of information and revelation, I believe, that will help get you to your next. Uh, so we're here Wednesday 7 for prayer, 7.30, worship and word. I want you here with us. Here's my last little announcement. Um, I want everybody to mark their calendars, put it in your phone, whatever you got to do for April the 27th. Really, it's the 28th at midnight. We are doing a midnight prayer gathering here at All Nations. Uh, some, some folks like, fam, y'all can count me out of that one. But listen, we are doing a midnight, and this just, it's just who we are. Uh, we're doing a midnight prayer gathering from midnight to 6 a.m. Saturday morning, um, Saturday the 28th of April. All right, so that's in three weeks. We'd love to have you all here. All we're going to do is worship. We're going to pray and seek the face of God throughout the night. And I believe it's in midnight prayer that God does. A, a, you ain't ever been in a midnight prayer service. I'm telling you, it's in midnight prayer, in that sacrifice. And in that third, fourth watch of the night, God begins to give revelation. I'm telling you. Now, why do you think David said, early in the morning will I seek thee? There's something that happens in the midnight. Amen. All right, so we're going to be here uh, the 28th, and I want you here with us. All right, today is our, um, our big giving week. Uh, every campus um, has what we call our paid in full weeks. And I want to go ahead and just, set, just lay a piece of foundation for, for this, and we're going to give, you know, and I'm going to give without there being any uh, force behind it without there being any manipulation behind it. Because what I've learned is that most people hate to give in church because they've been manipulated out of their money. They've given for 10, 15 years in church projects and never seen anything out of it. Um, and so I want to just kind of give a heart behind what and why we do what we do. Y'all, we are a two-year-old church. We're really a one-year-old church in our second year of existence. And God has given us a tremendous opportunity to be able to purchase seven acres of land that we're in right now. All right. Seven, seven acres, seven acres of land, property, over 40,000 square feet of building space and seven acres of land where we can still build more if and when necessary. When necessary, not a if, when necessary. Here's my heart. I believe God has called us to serve Southwest Atlanta. I believe that God has called us to serve this segment of the city. And though we've already been out um, doing evangelism pieces, etc., I've got a heart for the city of Atlanta. And I believe where city transformation begins 
is not necessarily on your job, but God will ignite something in you here to carry there. Are y'all with me? So this is, without question, an apostolic hub of Atlanta. And part of what we're called to do is raise people up, train people to do what God has called them to do, help people walk out deliverance and healing and make it available at all times. Guys, I, I'm excited about an opportunity for us to have all this acreage and it'd be free and clear. Here's my thing. I don't, I don't want to be the one that owes the bank money for 30 years. Maybe that ain't everybody's lot. My, my thing is, I don't want to owe no man anything, if at all possible. I, I, I mean, I don't want to owe anybody anything, especially saying I'm doing it in God's name, if at all possible. I believe that where God gives vision, he always also sends provision. He will send people to a house that have its heart and that are ready to sow into what it's going to become. So what we're doing now in raising this money, um, if any of you all have been to the bathroom, I apologize um, because I know there's only two. And many of you all have stood in line saying, Lord, help us. Lord, <laughs> we, we are in already a space of pretty significant renovations in the back half of this facility. Our plan is to expand the restrooms out in this next few months. Oh, I heard every woman in here say hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, every woman in the house, like, glory to God. You're so good. Uh, um, but, but we've got to do things in, in this on this side. But when it's time to go to a bank or it's time to get the money to buy this, because I'm telling you, I'm... If, if God says the same, we're going to buy this property in the next two years. I want y'all to hear me. If the Lord says the same, we're going to buy this property in two years. And we're going to have money that we're bringing to the table to make that purchase. Are you with me? Now, one thing that we do as a culture of churches is we, we don't ask people to give money all year. We do one big giving piece once a year. We do little small stuff throughout the course of the year, but we have one big giving Sunday, and here is ours. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Um, this is uh, pretty simple. There have been, we asked for 200 people to commit to sow $1,000 uh, back in January. I'm asking everyone who has made their commitment or those that are going to go over and above. And I never asked for over and above unless first I'm committing to over and above. Fanika and I have committed and are going over and above that thousand dollars i'm asking everyone who can to give your best gift all right to give your best gift we're going to give our tithes we're going to give our offering but even if you're giving with an envelope if you'll just write operation 200k on that just so we know exactly where it's going uh, we will do that appropriately and if you need an envelope i just want you to lift your hand If you're given via push pay, you can text all nations ATL to 77977. Now, y'all breathe in, breathe in, breathe out, because it gets real tight when you start talking about money. And every, I, I don't want it to be tight, because we're still going to flow in the joy of the Lord. But we're going to give and give with cheerful hearts today. All right? Can somebody help me thank God for our band? Lord have mercy. I just want to assure you what we're doing today. I'm not buying a new car with it. I'm not even hiring a new staff with it. It is preparing for what God is going to do in the future of this house. All right? Is everybody good with that? Are y'all ready to sew? Let me see your pearly whites. All right. All right so I want you to stand with me. I'm just preparing to give again myself. One second. Stand with us. Now, I want y'all to say this with everything you got. Now, real quick before we do our confession, everybody shout, I've got seed in the ground. Shout it one more time. I have seed in the ground. Oh, man. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all sit back down for one more second. I almost forgot something. If, if you want to give today, everybody sit down for one second. If you want to give today, but you do not have it to give, I want you to jump to your feet real quick. If you want to give, but you just don't have means to give anything, jump to your feet. Anybody. 
No hand goes empty at all nations. Anybody want to give? Thank you so much. Anybody want to give but don't have it to give? Jump to your feet. I think there's one more in the back. I need you all. Yep. There's one more right here. Family, you know what we do. Somebody find cash, find money. I need you to sow. Put it in their hands. No hand goes empty. Come on. Well, we're going to sow. The person you're putting it in, it's good ground. And if God has given you seed, you're just becoming a sower right now. Come on. Anybody else? I appreciate you all for doing this. Don't let a hand go empty. Don't let a hand go empty. Anybody else need seed? I think there's one more guy in, I think in the back here. Sing, sing, oh Maryland. Water is coming to the thirsty. Does everybody have seed? Everybody's good? Okay. This is not for you to put an offering. This is for you to use however you need it. Amen. We just put seed in you. You use it however you need it. You sow what you choose to sow. You get gas, you get debt, whatever you need. Use it for how you need it. We're just sowers. God gives us seed. We sow it back. Let's stand. Let's stand. And while we give, we're going to sing. Y'all ready? Deep breath. Say it with your chest. One, two, three. As an act of faith, love, gratitude and a heart for the house we bring our tithe and offering from our house and release it into yours because i am a generous and consistent giver the fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me i expect jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses benefits sales and commissions favorable settlements estates and inheritances interest and income rebates and returns checks in the mail gifts and surprises lost money found debts paid off expenses decrease blessings and increase i receive god's grace to walk in overflow and fulfillment i am under an open heaven i declare the glory of god and i expect more out of heaven than ever before in jesus name it is so and shall not be otherwise let's give singing over you. We say, sing, sing, oh, Maryland. Water is coming to the thirsty. Oh, you are in the high and the well. Draw from me, I will provide. Because I'm a river in the desert. Pouring my spirit on the broken. Give me beauty for your ashes. Joy for your sadness, heaven's open. I'm a river in the desert, pouring my, pouring my spirit on the broken. For your ashes, and joy for your, sadness, hey. So I'm a river, I'm a river in the desert, pouring my spirit on the broken. Give me fuel for your ashes. And for your sadness, I'm a river, I'm a river. In the desert, I'm pouring my spirit on the broken. 
my spirit on the broken. I'm giving beauty for your ashes. Join for your Join your sadness. One more time. I'm a river. I'm a river. Hey, hey. In the bed. Pouring my, pouring my spirit on the broken. I'm giving beauty for your ashes. For your ashes. I want to give you all context for why this song means so much to, to me. It means something when you've been in a drought, but find the river of God. <laughs> this only means something to about a hundred of y'all that know what it's like to live in a drought, but suddenly just jump in the river of God and be overtaken in the river of God. Now, here's the other part of this. Here's the other part of it. This is, I don't want y'all to go looking for this song because you're not going to find it. Last week, I locked a few people in a room in a house and I said, listen, I just want you all to pin what heaven is saying as it pertains to the future of this house and what we're about to do. And the chords you just heard are an All Nations Atlanta original. I don't think y'all heard me. What y'all just heard has not been pinned by anyone else, but has come from heaven's throne to Atlanta, Georgia, to sing over us, O oh barren one, that water is coming Shut to the river. In the desert, hey! I'm pouring my spirit on the broken. I'm giving beauty for your ashes. Hey, joy for your, joy for your sadness. Let the Lord so I'm a river. I'm a river. In the desert. In the desert. I'm pouring my, pouring my spirit on the broken. Sing it out. I'm giving beauty. Giving beauty for your ashes. For your ashes. Joy for your, joy for your sadness. Let the Lord so say heaven so. Have it so 
just pin a song that gave you a template to your future that wherever the river of God is there is a flow that cannot be stopped and I declare because you're standing in the space where the river of God flows 
that whatever you dream and set your hand to do, God is going to give you the power to make it a reality. I come against every dam and every blockage that's trying to stop you from your future, and I prophesy that the currents that are about to hit your life are about to overcome every dam that's ever tried to block who you were and who God was making you to be. May you dream new dreams. May you see new visions. May you walk in purpose. May you fulfill a call. May you see it like you've never seen it before. There is a river in the desert and it's watering you and it's giving you strength and it's giving you power. May you pin songs and pin books and write organizational charts in a way you've never done it before. May business structures hit your mind, hit your heart, and open your eyes to see that I am the God that started a thing and I shall perform what I said I would do in Jesus' name. It is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. Heaven's creativity. The dams are breaking now. Let your rivers flow. The dams are breaking now. Hey, let your rivers flow. Oh, now my mind goes. I hear heaven saying, the desert qualifies you for what you're about to walk in right now. Because you survived a dry place, because you survived a barren place, because you survived a place that was unproductive, the desert prepared you. It qualified you to stand in this river. Don't apologize for it. Don't take it back. There's a river there in the desert. There's a river, river, river of living water. Rivers of living water. Pour, 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 pour. Hey, uh, you have survived your last barren season. You survived your last barren season. Coramando Rebekeshe, Yamamando, Horaya Yabanse. You survived your last barren season. May the productivity of heaven hit your heart, hit your mind. And cause you to discover the will and the call of God. There's a river in the desert. Woo. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. And I want to prophesy it will never be closed again over your life. As your heart stays submitted to the will of God. May you experience open heavens every day for the rest of your life. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. He's a river in the desert. He's pouring his spirit on the broken. Woo! He's giving beauty for your ashes, joy for your sorrow. Heaven's open. Hey, he's the river in a desert. You didn't know how dry you were till you hit this river. But I'm telling you, creativity is flowing over a room and a space. Prophets are over you. You're about to feel the pressure of purpose in a new way. There's a pressure that comes with purpose that I'm asking God in this open heaven to press on you. Not the pressures of life, not the pressures of frustration, but the pressure of walking out your God-ordained purpose. The pressure that comes from heaven pressing into you, your why, giving you revelation of your future. <laughs> Heaven's open. Purpose is being unlocked and revealed. Bring you joy for your sadness. Woo. 
You'll never be dry again. You will never be dry again. Blockage is gone. Creativity is flowing. You're pouring up from heaven all that we need. You're pouring up from heaven. Woo! All that we. So we say yes. We say yes. We say yes. Woo! Because with another level of heaven comes another level of yeses. So we say yes. Give me all that you have, Jesus. Enlarge my capacity. Give me all that you have, Lord. Enlarge my capacity. Give me all that you have, Lord. I want to be able to receive you. I want to be able to receive you.
this space, I want to read this prophetic declaration over you. Part of it is the space that this song was birthed out of, Isaiah 54. It's prophesying over you, even in this moment. Shout for joy, O barren one. She who has not given birth, break forth in the joyful shouting and rejoice. She who has not gone into labor, for the sons of the desolate will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your pegs firm. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. And your descendants will take possessions of nations and will inhabit deserted cities. Here's the word of the Lord. Do not fear, for you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated or ashamed, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will no longer remember the disgrace of your widowhood. For your husband is your maker. The Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of the whole earth. In this space, Father, we thank you that you're moving away the shame, you're wiping away reproach, and you're keeping us in an environment where your Spirit can give life to every new thing you put on the inside of us. Thank you that we will not be put to shame. Thank you that we will not be put to shame. But you are our maker and our redeemer. And we love you. Woo. And we love you. <laughs> We've been barren, but today we rejoice. We love you. We've been desolate, but today we rejoice. We love you.
Come on, those are not tears of pain. Those are tears of rejoicing. The Lord has sung over you. Those are tears of rejoicing. Come on. May the shouts of rejoicing break out in the space. Rejoice, O oh barren one. <laughs> Rejoice, O oh barren one. Rejoice, O oh barren one. Rejoice, rejoice. Prophesy, this is your season to make room. You're rejoicing now because it's your season to make room. 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 Bump your neighbor real quick. Tell them, make room. Make, make space. Enlarge your tents. Expand your borders. Make room. Enlarge your tents. Expand your borders. Make room. Enlarge your tents. Woo! Expand your borders. And make room. Enlarge your tents. Expand your borders and make room. Enlarge your tents. Expand your borders and make room. Make room. Make room. Enlarge your tents. Expand your borders. Make room. Make room. Make room. Make room. Make room, make room, make room. Hey! Make room, make room. Make room, make room. Woo! I know you've been empty in the last couple years, but I'm prophesying it's your time to make room. Don't wait for them to come build it before they get there. Make room. I don't need an audience to make it happen. I'm making room. I'm making He's stretching out in me and I'm making room. I'm making He's room. He's stretching out in me and I'm making room. I'm making room. I'm making room. I'm making room. Because you will not be barren forever. Make room. 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 Gotta make room. Woo. Because what's coming is better than what's been. Make room. Make room, make room, make room, make room. Make room, make room, make room. Enlarge your tents and make room. Enlarge your tents. Woo. I promise I'm not just trying to shout y'all I feel it in the room 
the creativity and the expansion of heaven. It's time for you. Just make room. Make room. Make room. You've been faithful too long to stay this small. Make room. Make room. Make room. Make room. Expand your borders, make room. Enlarge your tent. 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 Expand your borders, make room. you to take your hand I'm going to the work and I just need you to go ahead and take a peep into your future so that you understand what you are about to make room for because the space you're in cannot contain what's about to come I need about 50 of y'all that know what's coming is better than what you've had to shout make room make room make room make room
Take your neighbor. I'm telling you, the heavens are open. It's not a figment of your imagination. The heavens are open. This is a season for you to make more room than you've ever made before. Make room. It's a prophetic declaration. Make room. It's a prophetic action. Make room. Don't wait for it to come. I'm making room right now. I need you to give God one more great big shout of triumph. Shout to God like you mean it. Shout to God like deliverance is your portion. Shout to God like he's the God of expansion. Shout to God like he expands your tent and enlarges your borders. Shout to God. Shout to God. Shout to God. Shout to God. Pull your neighbor down. Woo! Pull your neighbor down. Pull your neighbor down.
has a creative genius on the inside of you and heaven's about to pull on it in a new way there's a creative genius that's been dormant in you heaven's about to pull on you heaven's about to pull 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 You got too much creativity to be dormant. You got too much creativity to be stagnant. There are ideas that the earth has not seen yet that are about to rise over regions, over cities, over nations. And I believe in this room that God is opening up realms of your thinking, portals of your understanding that he may download into you what heaven is saying over your life and for the future of a nation and I declare that this room will never be void of answers that a nation needs but we are trademarked for the future and may God reveal to us the mysteries and the secrets of heaven as it pertains to tomorrow may we never be a house without answers but God give us the pattern for the future show us what you you're doing in tomorrow and we will be great stewards of everything you for in Jesus name if you receive that worship him right there Woo. nations are waiting for your answers come on nations are waiting for your song nations are waiting for your book nations are waiting for your inventions nations Nations, nations are waiting. They're waiting for the revealing and the manifestation of the sons of God. They're waiting. They're waiting for the manifestation. Reveal yourself, oh God. Reveal yourself unto us, oh God. not broke you've just been lacking inspiration but in this room I'm telling you I feel heaven's inspiration I feel you so powerfully and potently for your future and I'm telling you I'll be a man of God I literally feel the weight of inventions that need trademarks of songs and ideas that need to be patented God is about to give you clues into the mysteries of tomorrow and before they know they even needed an answer he's gonna download it into you Woo! the mysteries of heaven may they be revealed over a room and over a people because you survived the desert and now in this river He's never going to let you be dry again in Jesus' name. Can you give God one tremendous hand clap of praise? Some of you all probably just need to get back to a seat and take three to five minutes, put it in a pad, put it in a phone. I feel like God has already been downloading into some of you what heaven is saying. Woo. And I don't want you to miss a moment. But he's, if he's given you something, get it down now. Get it down now. Jesus. Whoa. 
Ona mando rebeshe. Ki anda mando robosore. Ibarre mando satatana nendo rabande. Kora mando robosore. Kada danando robosore bebebeshe. Imando robosore karendi. Yara mando rababando rebeshe. Ibarre mando robosore manda kiari mansi. Shora mando reba. Kona mando roboso, kodi mando rebebebeshe, hona mando rebeke ya mando roboko, shodi mando robosia kiando shia rebe, kona mando rebeke. For I am the Lord who is the redeemer of your time, and I am the Lord that has walked in your tomorrow, and I declare over you. That what I've started in you, I shall perform. My hand has not moved. My purpose has not been restricted. I am the God that will fulfill the promise. And I am the God that is the author and the finisher. Be not dismayed. I'll never be mocked. I am the God who is the finisher for your life. And every good work I have started, I shall perform. In Jesus' name. If you believe he's redeeming your time, I just need you to give him one great big. You're not burned out. He just had not redeemed your time yet. He's redeeming, redeeming time. I'm, I'm not going to even attempt to I'm not going to even attempt to preach through all of this, but I feel to make all of this come to a culmination, it'll make sense if I read this. Are y'all with me? Um, I'm going to read from six passages of Scripture, and I think they're going to make today, and I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to hit it. I'm going to read it, and once we get to the end, it's going to all make sense because I believe for some of you it's been the story of your life, <clears throat> but this is going to make sense. 1 Samuel 18, um, I'm going to read verses 6 through 12, and I'm going to just, I'm going to keep jumping, and it'll make sense, okay? Are y'all with me? Verse 6, 1 Samuel 18, David and Saul, as they were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, songs of joy and musical instruments. The women sang as they played and danced, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Then Saul became very angry, for this saying displeased him, and he said, They've ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me they've only ascribed thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? Saul looked at him with suspicion and jealousy from that day forward, and it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul and he raved madly inside his house while David was playing the harp with his hand as usual. And there was a spear in Saul's hand. Saul hurled the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. And now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him but had departed from Saul. Go to 1 Samuel 22, verse 1 and 2. David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's house heard about it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was suffering had hardships and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him and he became captain over them. There were about 400 men with him. 1 Samuel 23, verse 19. The Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah and saying, Is David not hiding with us in the strongholds of Horesh on the hill of Hekelah, which is south of Jesmon? Now then, O king, come down to Ziph in accordance with all your heart's desire to do so and capture him. And our part shall be to hand him over to the king. Saul said, May you be blessed by the Lord because you have had compassion on me. Go now, be very persistent, and investigate, and see where his haunt is, and who has been seen, who has seen him there. For I am told he is very cunning. 
So look and take note of all the places where he hides and come back to me with the established facts. Then I will go with you. If he is anywhere in the land, I will search out among all the thousands of Judah. First Samuel 24. I'm going to make it all make sense. But you don't know promise until you've lived through betrayal. First Samuel 24, verse 8. David also got up afterward and went out of the cave and called after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and lay himself face down. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say David is seeking to harm you? Behold, your eyes have seen today how the Lord had given you into my hand in the cave. Some told me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not reach out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. You don't understand what it's like to be promoted until you've had an opportunity to kill your enemy. 1 Samuel 31. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. Two more. And the men of Israel fled before them and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons. They killed Jonathan and Abinadad and Malkishua, Saul's sons. The battle went heavily against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was severely wounded by the archers. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and pierce me, me through with it. Otherwise, these uncircumcised Philistines will come and pierce me, and pierce me through and abuse and mock me. But his armor bearer would not, because he was terrified of doing such a thing. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. 2 Samuel 5, and this is it. Verse 1. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you who led Israel to war and brought Israel in from battle. And the Lord told you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be the ruler over them. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed him king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king and reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. Here's today's word. You've been processed for promotion. Everything that God has let you survive was not to kill you, but to process you. And today, heaven agrees with everything that has already been transacted in a room. He has qualified you in a way that man can't. He has allowed you to survive what would have killed everybody else. The enemies you did not even desire suddenly came upon you to eat of your flesh. But the Lord processed you to promote you. There is no real promotion without the processing of heaven. Very often, woo, heaven will use hands that you love to process you for your future. ones you said you would serve until you had nothing left to give will suddenly begin to per, per, portray soul-like tendencies. And while you're trying to just do the right thing, they're trying to kill what they see on you. But what prepares you for a future is when you can be on the run in a cave in a desert and still say, I will not be moved from what my God has said. It feels like everything around me is closing in and it's tight and I'm restricted and I can't breathe and I can't move. I feel empty. I feel alone. I feel void. But then suddenly God will reveal to you, it's all part of my process.
Every king has a story. Every survivor has a memory of what they made it through. But all of it was used as a tool to prepare you for promotion. Until you've lived through betrayal. Until you've had a moment where the ones you were trying to help tried to take your life. Until you've experienced your name being ran through the mud while you simply try to live right. Everything that you think is an attack is not an attack. It's the processing of heaven. Today, I want to echo what heaven has already started in this room. I'm asking for heaven to give you an endurance. An ability to see it and not be swayed in a different direction. A, a reason to endure it and say, I'm still going to be steadfast. I'm going to be unmovable. I'm going to abound to the work of the Lord. I will not be moved. Because, Lord, and I'm not going to preach it all the way through. But many of you like David are wearing a mantle you never asked for. And some of you are afraid to pray, God, I would rather you take it away than for me to have to deal with what I'm dealing with. I would rather not have to. Woo. You prayed this prayer this year. I didn't ask for this. God, I didn't want this. You could have put it on somebody else. I didn't ask to see what I see. I didn't ask for the favor that I got. I didn't ask for this. Until, until you can live through being rejected by those that came up with you. Having someone take you in and then kick you out. Having someone say, I'll be this for you. Then when they see who you really are, trying to pull it back and take it back. Until you can live through moments where those who invited you in and gave you a place to say, suddenly say, you're no longer welcome here. And not because you've done anything wrong, but just because you showed up with the grace that could not be explained. Saul kicks David out. David finds himself on the run. Listen to me. David was on the run so that when he came before kings just to spare his life, he would begin to act like a crazy man. Doing anything by any means necessary just to live. And some of you all have walked in and experienced doing things that you thought you'd never have to do just to survive. And have said, God, why me? God, why now? I'm already low. What else can you strip from me? I'm already bankrupt. What else can you take? I don't have any friends as it is. Why would you remove the one place that I call stable? But God has a tendency of stripping every dependency you've got to prove to you that when you're really at rock bottom, I'll show you that I'm the rock that builds you back up. Yeah. I'll take everybody you need. I'll take every title. I'll take every dollar. I'll take everything that you thought was necessary to make you something. To prove to you if you give it to me, I'll build you better. reason 
why most people don't survive processing is because when the squeeze happens, when the difficulty ensues, it is easier to turn around and say, I'll be nobody than to endure and say, God, no matter what it takes, I'm going to see to the other end of this. Oh, now listen. God is about to give you a courage to face those that caused you the greatest adversity. And instead of using your mouth to kill them, he's going to use you as the means to say, I can bless you in spite of what you've done. You're really not ready for promotion until you learn how to bless those that have tried to kill you. You know they got decrees on you to assassinate your character, to kill your name, to kill everything that you've built. But you still find a way to say, I love you and not just with the love of God. I really love you for real. And even if I could kill you, I don't want to get you back. Processing teaches you something so valuable about being undercover. David says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Yeah. Affliction brings you into something in the presence of God that comfortability can never birth. Affliction gives you a revelation of the goodness of God that being content will never bring to pass. God does something valuable in affliction to prepare you for a future. But in a moment, when David was not even asking for it, God was preparing him for a future. Family, I need you to hear me. What you have been walking out endure and enduring has simply been process and preparation. You thought one open door was the promotion and it was not it. Heaven's promotion is bigger than a door. I want to take it a step further and we're going to pray and I'm going to let you go. The mantle that you've been called to carry is revealed in the weight of circumstance that you have to bear that you do not impose on yourself. There is a weight and a burden that comes with mantles, that comes with calls, that comes with responsibilities. And they are birthed from a place not of stuff you did for yourself or because of you. But just because of what God has assigned you to fulfill in the earth. I would dare to say for many of you. The pain that this year has started with. Has everything to do with what he's trying to reveal through you and out of you. For a future you haven't even walked in yet. But if you can endure it. Let them slander your name. God will clean it. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God, when, when God has put something on you, you never have to fight for yourself. All you have to do is stay under cover. And when he hides me under his wings, no matter what comes against me, I'm still covered. Today, I prophesy over a room, the processing of heaven, that you would process and allow heaven to process you in the right way. To walk out the future he's called you to. I declare not just the blessing of the Lord, but the processing of heaven. That you will not pull out too soon. That you will not give up before he's finished doing his perfect work in you. That you will see the fullness of the call and the future that God has prepared you for. Because you endured the process. God never 
arbitrarily hands out promotion. He does it to those who he can trust with what he needs. And today, I'm looking at a segment of people that are willing to say, God, you can trust me. I've been aggravated. I've asked you why. But at the end of the day, my response is, you can trust me. I know I haven't always been trustworthy. But today, my declaration is, you can trust me. I'll be on the run and I won't retaliate. I'll watch hell try to destroy everything that my future has. And I'll stand and I'll still trust you. And I will be trustworthy. I'm looking for 50 people and I'm just, I'm, I'm done. I'm wrapping up because I'm not going to preach all the way through this. For 50 people. They'll just make up your mind today to say, God, you can trust me. If that's you, I'm culminating everything that God has already done today with this. Meet me at this altar. I don't have anything lengthy to say. I feel like heaven has already said everything we needed today. The altar gets full, just jump in a row. I just want you to open up your hands. And at this altar, what looks like empty hands are the hands of the faithful and the trustworthy. God, I'm asking you to fill these hands with heaven's supply. Unlock mysteries of their tomorrow. Prepare them for, for promotions that others would say they were not qualified for. Bypass the rubrics of man and download into your sons and your daughters heaven's ingenuity and heaven's genius. Give them feet like hind's feet. To dig, to stand, and to endure. Prophesy that they will not be distracted or deterred by what they see, sense, and feel in the lives of others. I break the spirit of comparison and competition. And I declare over this room and over this altar that what God has created you for will come to pass in due season. Father, in a time where everybody wants your acceleration, today we're asking for your process. Don't accelerate us without processing us. Don't move us forward so fast that when we get there, we will not be able to handle what you promised. But today, God, I am asking woo, that you cover a room and a space with trustworthy hands to fulfill what you've called them to fulfill. I declare these hands will not drop the ball again. These hands will not get caught up looking into the hands of others, wishing that they had what somebody else got. But Father, what you can trust us with is that we will fulfill the assignment we were created for and we will walk in the promotion of heaven in Jesus' name. Now, would you take those same hands and I want you to lift them to God. 
I just want you to take a moment and worship him for trusting you with the future. The cave did not kill you. Saul could not kill you. Your frenemies could not kill you. Because God deposited something in you so powerfully that it could not be taken or stolen by the hands of men. You did not waste years. You were being prepared. You did not miss a moment. God was preparing you for a future. Lift that across the room. My storage. My storage is empty. And I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available. My storage is empty. Oh, God. And I. My storage, my storage, it is empty, God, and I am oh, my storage, my storage is empty, and I am available to you. Father, we confess our availability. <laughs> our will, we give it to you. <laughs> our will, we lay it at your feet. Lift it. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord. Come on, we're going to show. To show someone. And enable me to say Raise it up last time my soul my soul empty and I am above my soul rich my soul you can have it all oh God and I am above my story So, Father, we won't be full of ourselves and want your promise for tomorrow. Empty us completely. Process us for a future. And today, we thank you for heaven's promotion. We are undercover. And anyone who humbles himself under the mighty hand of God, you exalt in due season. Thank you in this room. There are some on the brink of a due season. And this will be the year that they will not be rejected. But they will be recipients of what you promised. Be not weary in well-doing. Due season is here. You're going to reap if you faint not. So, Father, we honor you. And we love you. Woo! And we trust you. In Jesus' name. Grab someone's hand close by you. Just grab a hand. It's the last thing. It's prophetic in its demonstration. I want you to take the next minute and a half. And I want you to start praying for and rejoicing over your neighbor's promotion. It's a prophetic demonstration. Come on. Woo! 
It's a prophetic demonstration. Come on. Mama, mama, mama. 30 more seconds. Come on. Pray for their vision. Pray for their insight. Pray for their ingenuity. Pray for their confidence. Pray for their self esteem. Pray for their faith to try again. Come on. I feel it stirring and brewing in a room. Come on. Pray it through. Woo. Y'all give me 30 more seconds. Pray it through, and we're going to rejoice. Some of y'all about to start all over again, but God's going to build it. Woo. Last season's failure did not kill you. Your father dropping you cannot stop you. Being despised and rejected was the incubator for your future. Come on. Ten more seconds. Konamamando Rebosa. For engineers, for entrepreneurs, for educators, for government officials, for politicians, Father, do it in them now. Woo! I feel fire in this room. What I need you to do is let that hand go, and I want you to praise God for the hand you are holding. And the future they're about to walk into. I need you to shout unto God. Hey, hey, hey. That your neighbor is headed to a tomorrow. And a future that has not been revealed. I need you to thank God. Like they're already on the other side of it. And they are walking down their purpose and their promise. I need you to thank God. That you're standing next to millionaires. And multi-millionaires. Hey. I need you to thank him that dreamers are around you. I need you to thank him that you're standing next to investors, that you're standing next to those that have a key to your future. The heaven is open, the heavens are open, and promotion is on the way. Promotion is on the way. Yes, it is. Now you shouted for your neighbor. Can you shout one more time for yourself? Ma, 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 ma. I see you in nations. I see you in cities. Hear me? I see you outside of this region in spaces that have not been touched. There's a market for you. There's a promise for you. You have not seen it all. You have not. Heavens are open. The heavens are open. <laughs> and you have been processed for promotion. The heavens are open. You've been processed for promotion. You didn't survive it just to survive it. You have been processed for promotion. If you believe that, give God one more shout of praise. You can just return to your seats. Woo!